All right. Well, we're back. Uh, internet went down, guys. <laughs> How you doing, Ed? Good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy we're back, I guess we're back. Are, are we back? Is, uh, is the internet working? My internet's working. It says we are live. I'm not sure if it creates a new stream or, you know, I don't see anybody in the comments, but um, we should be back. I'm going to tell everybody to refresh just in case because I'm on the same one. And here we Let's uh, give everybody a second to get back in. We had a little bit of a of a hiccup. The, hiccup. My, I mean, this is the first time something like that happened. That uh, the internet totally uh, just died. Uh, as as uh, and yeah, the show says we are live. So if people go into it, um, should Maybe still see the same stream. No, well, Judge Tourette this is, is the first time that. something like that oh. happened. Uh, oh. The internet totally. There we go. All right. Wow. So, Ed? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm just like, you know, uh, looking to see uh, how, you know, everybody's, uh, if, if they're watching us on YouTube, I'm just uh, putting a little message to uh, make sure that they see us. Yeah, maybe you can, maybe you could tweet out for everybody to kind of just refresh and uh, we can then start all over again and get everybody in the chat room. Uh, you know, hey, welcome to the internet, folks. Things things happen. The interesting thing and the funny thing was is I literally was just welcoming you in. I don't know how much anybody heard, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I do my introduction. I, I, I go welcome you. And I say, you know, welcome my buddy, Uncle Ed. And then I see, I go, Ed, Ed, Ed. Just, yeah. And I'm like, I look over and I'm like, oh, he's frozen. Meanwhile, my daughter is uh, literally a few seconds before was telling me her Alexa device wasn't working. That explains it. Internet was down. Didn't know it yet, but the internet was down. And, uh, you know, welcome to doing a uh, internet based show. Things happen. But it's, it's back now. So, guys, um, you know, it just kind of threw us off a little bit of off our game. But uh, we're, we're ready to uh, talk a little bit of football. Yeah, absolutely. Ed. Um, you know. Have you have you have you chatted everybody in the in the chat telling them to, to jump I'm, back I'm, in? As we're doing that, we're yeah. Because uh, you, you know, can they, you can they, see yeah. the stream is 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 definitely happening. Not even after the refresh, it's yeah. It's I don't see it moving. I'm I'm on there. Uh, the beginning it comes off, but um, and then just. Did uh, you just hear the music and that that was it? Anybody uh, no? Okay. Well, they're already asking questions in the chat. Um, I don't see anything on the chat right now. Let me refresh again just to make sure. Well, if you go to ah, I see the second stream. It made a new stream, Ed. Oh, so we have a new. Um, what do we have? Like a new. Um, um, yeah, we have a new stream. Well, I can put it on Twitter and stuff. On yeah, why don't you tweet the the new stream? Um, if you go in, it's just now called live stream. Okay, I'm trying to check it right now. Yeah, because people in the chat right now they're just asking what happened. Yeah, uh, do you have the the link by any chance? You can send it. And I don't know pass if I it to them so they can get on there. You know, otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna be you and me, man. <laughs> and that's that's fine, but it's more fun when we got our friends on the on the uh, when we got everybody. Let me yeah, see if I can, yeah, I can chat you through there, Skype. Yeah, but you don't have a, another. Is there another link or is that? Yeah, I just chatted it to you through Skype. I don't know if you can see it while you're on Skype. Oh, yeah, let me let me go there. Okay, there it is. All right, we're just trying to stall a little bit as, as we can get everybody back on the live stream. Um, it's funny, as I watch some live streams of, of other types of videos, and 
And this definitely does happen to other people, but they're not ne necessarily using like a, a streaming program like we are. So they, it, it, I think it's a little easier, but it still has to create a new stream every single time, and that stinks. So, um, so I'm sending it to them right now, and I'm going to get on it right now myself. So letting people know where we're at so that it won't be just you and me the whole time and let me get on on Twitter wow this really yeah it throws a little yeah. wrench in everything uh, yeah. but this will be well, well. It, it's funny is I started off off the show saying and I, again I don't know what how much everybody heard but I started off saying this will be the final show in this studio in my little mm -hmm. studio here this will be the final show in this studio and literally it oh, yeah. explodes. It implodes. Everything, everything, the stream implodes, right? As I'm saying, this will be the last show in the studio. It's like, it's like uh, the internet gods are saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold your horses, Peter Brown. Hold your horses. We didn't say you could go. In it. Oh, you think you're in control? We'll <laughs> knock it off. We'll kick you out. Yeah. All right, okay, well. So, yeah, everybody's trying to change right now to a different link. I already sent it to them. I'm sending it one more time for those that didn't see it. And hopefully you'll be able to... You're able to see the, the new chat, the new... Uh... Yeah. Okay. And it says video is private, it says. <sighs> the, the link you sent me says it's private. Okay, it won't be anymore. Why is this happening? Okay, it's not private anymore. Okay. Let me go back and tell these guys to refresh and oh, they don't see it. Um, yeah, because they're not. I guess some of them tried to get in and they didn't see anything, so. Okay, we got Andres Hoyas is joining us. Welcome, Andres. All right. So people are starting to pop in. We we had a technical difficulty, so welcome, Andres. So uh, people are starting to to pop in. Hopefully, we get a few more guys, a few more of our regulars popping in. Yeah. So people are starting to pop in, right? Who else do you see? That's it. Just Andres. How you doing, Andres? The only one I was able to go. A new link. I've, I've been. All right, we got Joseph Jeem in there now. I see it. Thank good, good. We uh, the internet went down, and we've been spent spent the last few minutes uh, trying to get it back all up. Diego Garcia is in. Hey, Diego, welcome to the to the to the. the hey, this is the first time we've ever had this kind of uh, implosion. So this is a. Uh, this, Sorry uh, about that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, we're we're learning, right? We're learning what happens when the internet goes down, right? What do we have to do? We got to scramble, create a new stream, and uh, and then when we create the new stream for whatever reason, it decides to go private. So, and you can't you can't go on an old stream apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it was um. So yeah, I was I was in the old uh you know chat, uh, sending the the new link. So people, but some people weren't getting it. So yeah. All right, there you go. All right, James Great Batten is in there All watching right. from England. How you doing, James? Okay, guys. Sorry about that. And Peter, you know, for everybody that's coming in, go ahead and tell them what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you got Chris Arjun is finally in. Uh, Ricky Ricardo is finally in. Uh, the old link must have been corrupted. No, no corruption, Andres. Uh, my internet went down right as I was starting the show. My internet crashed. Right as I, I started welcoming in Ed, and uh, I don't know how much uh, played. I don't. I, you guys could tell me. I don't know how much actually made it through, but uh, my internet went down. It was down for what a good ten minutes or so. So luckily, yeah. it came back up fairly I, quick. I almost drank all my beer, Peter. I drank all my coffee, and I was starting. <laughs> I was. I was freaking <laughs> out a little bit. Time. I got to go get another one. <laughs> well, not now. Now you got. Now you got a. Paul P is in here now. Reg Young. All right, welcome guys. Yeah. Thanks for finding the new link, and thanks for joining. Um, we'll have to we'll have to do some post promotion on this one, Ed, because uh, now it's just called live stream. So it's yeah. it's you know 
Uh, everybody's going to go click on the, the, the one that we promoted in the be- beginning. B. King is here. He hit it with a hammer and fixed it. Thanks, B. King. We need that kind of, uh, that kind of craftsmanship. Just hit it with it. You know, if, if you can't fix it, hit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll work. All right, Ed. Well, let's let's get into it. Uh, yeah. James Batten he's, he says uh, he's doing good, mates. Enjoying the content you make. Go enter Miami, my chosen MLS club, because of Beckham. Hey, whatever the reason is, welcome. I, it's, that's cool that we're we're reaching out across the pond, as they say. But we've got we've got some things planned for tonight's show. But as always, this is uh, you know your show, guys. So you could kind of direct a little bit. And uh, and and act, be active in the chat, and uh, and and we'll we'll talk about what you want to talk about. But before we get too far into it, we definitely have to say a big thank you to our sponsor, Caneswear. And uh, Caneswear is a great store to get all your Inter Miami gear. That's where I got my shirt that I'm currently wearing. Go to Caneswear in Davie. The store is open. It's jam packed with everything you can want for Inter Miami, plus tons of. Hurricanes uh, wear as well, uh, Miami Dolphins, uh, Miami Marlins, whatever you want for the local sports clubs, they got it, but they got a whole wall of Inter Miami gear. So great selection, real friendly staff, great prices, everything is marked down. So go to Canes Wear and uh, get yourself all geared up. Yeah. So yeah, Peter. Sorry, I've been I've been putting it on social media so people could see that we changed the link. Chris Arjun is saying I need a longer Cat Five next time. No, the internet keeps going down in my neighborhood. It's not my. It's not here, but uh, the neighborhood. But you know, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, and we were laughing a little bit, me and Ed. And, and for those of you that rewatch, you're going to see us just kind of killing time in the beginning of just kind of like small talking because there's nobody else in here. But yeah. um, this is the last show we'll be doing from this studio, from my little home studio. This will be the last time I come to you from the studio. Now, my, my, my next studio may look very similar. I don't know. It may, it may look exactly the same. But this will be the last time I do the show from, from here because I am moving. But, uh, uh, and, 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 and the Internet gods, I think, were fighting back, saying, not so fast, guys. Not so fast. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, we, but we, we, we have some fun stuff to talk about. And Ed, you know, we put in the um, we put in the 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 title of the the video that uh, we're we're looking at getting a new player. Yeah, Peter LGP. You put it because I guess he can't pronounce the name. Come on, Peter, you could say Le- no, Leandro Gonzalo Perez. I could say that. Pides. 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 Oh, okay, so I was, close. I was close, but no, they call him LGP in Atlanta. They called that's the that's what they called him LGP. I didn't make that up. I'm not that creative. I, I thought you did, man. I was like, wow, he just abbreviates everything. But, um, yeah, man, he's a, a really good player. Not the player that we expected, Peter. No, but... Um, so, uh, the, the, uh, keep this in mind. Um, Paul McDonough did say that we were going to get three players. We were going to get a DP. Before uh, the tournament or sometime after, depending on when MLS will allow it, then he wanted to get a TAM player, and then they wanted they also planned on getting a um, uh, um, a player from the um, mm-hmm. allocation. Right? Allocation. I, I was, I, on the tip of my tongue was expansion, but it's at the allocation. And so this is an allocation player. So that is a, now he didn't mention defense when he was talking about. It. He was talking all attacking players, but you know he's th- probably saying stuff to throw people off. I mean, you know. We know he'll tell stories just to, to to get you know throw you off a little bit. I mean, he's he's done it with us and stuff like that. He's even flat out told me that he would have to if we had him on here. He would just lie to me because he has to. But yeah. so, but think about that. That you know, what kind of defense do we have now? We we have to have consi- maybe one of the best defenses in the league. You got Figal and him in the middle. Are we playing maybe with four in the back? Put those two guys in the middle. Wow. Yeah, I, I would imagine so, man. But uh, you got to think, Peter, that um, there's something that I saw. I think it was uh, Franco Panizza was talking about the possibility that they're they're wanting to replace Torres because Torres, I guess, in his opinion, uh, you know, wasn't playing that well, especially the last game. He got the red card and everything. I thought he played pretty well, but um, uh, he said he looked back at the video and, and it looked like he uh, wasn't making very good passes and stuff like that. So... He was kind of saying that maybe this is the 
player that's going to replace him. And we now have a lot of depth in defense. So um, this guy's a starting material. So, you know, he's he's going to bump somebody off. And I don't think it's Figal. No, he's an MLS all-star. So he was involved with, he was part of the championship run that, uh, um, you know, Atlanta did. So he's he's definitely a great player. He he left the the team. Apparently he didn't even want to leave Atlanta, but you know he butted heads with the with the new manager and and so from what I understand, I mean I I don't know everything about Atlanta. I do right. know we have an Atlanta viewer that. Uh, um, okay, this is interesting. Andres Hoyas is saying he thinks that LGP is useful, of course, but you think must use him as leverage for another player. Hmm. So okay. using him as a leverage for another player, I don't think so. I think you keep him building out from the back, uh, being you know, you know, a, a lot of MLS teams in their expansion year they they focus too much on the attack and 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 then they're they're wide open on the defense. We're gonna have a solid defense, and wow. so you know you're talking um, maybe Roman Torres on the on the on on the, the one of the flanks. What does he play on the right? I think and and um, maybe Ben Sweat on the left, and that and you know so then. You know where where does that leave Christian McCoon? Does he then not play because he's only nine, what nineteen something like that? Yeah. He's young. You know, does he not play or does he or does he go into a defensive mid position, which he's also played in at, at times? Because they yeah. talked about getting that defensive mid player, and and since they didn't do that, maybe that gives McCoon the chance to take that role. Well, this is a lot, like you mentioned the allocation. So there is that Tam player, and there's there's still the DP that's coming. So um, I could. I could see that maybe McCoon's not going to be playing this year, to tell you the truth. He may not play at all, or he's playing yeah. in, a, in a, some sort of a defensive uh, midfield role. But yeah, he or he's just playing for depth. You know, whenever a player gets injured, he comes in. Right, right. I think that's what's going to happen because Leandro's in his prime. Yeah, uh, he's he's just he's a starter. He's he's 28 years old. Um, um, so I I think he's coming to start, and um, I think Torres is probably going to be out and. Um, Hopefully he gets here on time and in shape. Otherwise, uh, our first game against Orlando is probably going to be um, AJ De La Garza might be the one that starts. So they need to get this thing going. Why do you wait? Why do you think uh, AJ De La Garza will start? I think he might start because uh, to replace Torres. Oh yeah, because we have a. Uh, I, I don't know. It's 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 going to be kind of interesting to see how he shuffles the back around. Yeah. We got, but here's the thing: is now we got plenty of options. I mean, we got a strong defense. You got plenty of options in that defense. But here's one. Uh, uh, no, 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 that's the wrong one. Uh, oh, here, a new Weissman says Atlanta fans did not take this well. <laughs> They're not happy. They're not happy about it. Um, one world, one goal says it's good. They shore up the defense and continue with the Argentine connection. Mexican League and Atlanta too, but we need a number nine and number ten. Pizarro better at forward. I don't know about that. I don't know if he's better at forward. I mean, you know, actually, I was watching some MLS extra time, and they were talking this week about, uh, you know, what player needs Inter Miami has, and signing that DP and where it should be and where it shouldn't be. And and Pizarro is at number ten. I mean, that's kind of what he we're hoping he is, right? But they were saying he's never really been that great number ten. He's he's you know he he definitely can make chances happen, but maybe he's better playing a little bit behind the number ten and or playing next to him, kind of playing off of him in some ways. Um, I, I mean, I haven't seen enough of him yet because we only watched him for two games, and I don't watch the Mexican league really. But um, you know that that's that'll be interesting. Is 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 where what happens next as far as uh, you know the players and you know who they bring in next? Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Peter, because um, now I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the back line. As as long as this guy comes quick, uh, you know, it looks like it's it's a done deal. The, the way that they're talking, even on on I went to this website, Transfer Market. Yeah, and they're saying it's a done deal i mean everything i'm hearing and you know uh it, it's it's a done deal everything you know that we read and then also some 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 personal um thing that you know someone sent me that you know it sounds like it's a done deal uh you know who knows i mean we thought other things were done deals and they didn't happen but he's supposed to join the team before the 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 mls tournament and here's the thing too is 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 paul mcdonough did talk about getting a uh a dp or something before the uh, tournament 
but that could complicate things just because of you know being people being able to travel in and out of the country. So um, Tor, uh, Pires doesn't have this problem because he's got a green card, so he could travel. Right. And from what I understand, I was reading something about him is that he's kept a house in California this entire time that he was playing in Tijuana and would just drive down. So he had a house, I think it's San Diego, I think it was, which then it's not a far drive to Tijuana from. No, oh, yeah, it's really close, man. It's, you just cross the border and you're good. Just so, share your ID and go on through, sir. Right. So I did read that he's, he's, he's been living in the United States. So, I mean, that makes it That's easier to, to get him here. Yeah, well, that's a lot of uh, a lot of players that play in, in that team in Tijuana. Uh, they live in the United States and they go and play over there. Oh, I didn't know that that was a normal thing. I thought he yeah. was. Oh, OK, that's interesting. A lot of people do that. And there's people that, that actually do the other, the other way around. They live in Mexico because it's cheaper and they come and work in the States and they go, you know, they commute every day. Interesting. So, yeah, that's that's a way of life. All right. Hey, well, since we're talking about this, let's. You know, we, 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 you guys are able to, to, to leave voicemail, uh, FMTV weekly. You could call 786 474 4435. 4435. It's on the screen. We actually have a couple of voicemails, uh, here this week. And, and one of them, I already listened to it. And so one of them was actually, a, had, I mean, it was a little long, but it's from one of our buddies. And he does ask questions about players. So let's take a listen to this voicemail. Hello, this is Ted Sykowski from Coral Gables, Florida. Um, last name is spelled C-I-K-O-W-S-K-I. And Coral Gables is uh, near Miami. It's a little town near Miami, um, just so you know. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is um, Inter Miami. Uh, I saw there were some new developments with the stadium, and would you guys place the odds of the stadium deal getting done, or do you think we're going to be at uh, the old Lockhart site for several years rather than just two or three like it was planned to begin with? Maybe. Um, because that leads me to my next question. They need to sign some star players. I want Cavani. And by the way, I'm going to leave another voicemail with uh, talking about Robert Lewandowski since Peter doesn't know anything about him. Um, he's probably going to win the Ballon d'Or, Ballon d'Or this year. Um, he's having an insane season, but he does every year. He's number four all-time in Champions League goals. Okay, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. We need to sign Cavani and Thiago Silva, both of which are going to be leaving PSG this season. Uh, and how that ties into my first question is, if I'm going to be driving from this little town called Coral Gables, look it up, all the way to North Fort Lauderdale, I need to see some stars. I like Pizarro. I love Pizarro so far. Uh, but I don't like seeing, and no offense to this kid, I know he's young, but Robbie Robinson, is that his name? He looked pretty clumsy in his first couple of games. He may be, he may be very good in that, uh, Carranza? Uh, he might be good too. We haven't seen him yet. Uh, but we need a striker that can finish. And Cavani is really good in the air, especially. Um, he does miss some sitters here and there. Um, but he's definitely a higher standard than most of the strikers in MLS. I mean, okay, let's face it. I'm going to be going to the games anyway. I used to go to Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Strikers games. But anyway, okay, so bullet points. One, Coral Gables is near Miami. Two, uh, they need, what do you guys think about the stadium deal? And three, uh, what about some star players coming? Especially the ones I mentioned. I think they need to be from South America or a really, really good player if they're from Europe. Okay. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs> wow, that was... Oh, wait, uh... one more thing. Um, I love your show. You guys do a great job. Bye. There's <laughs> a lot there to digest, Ed. Whoa, that was uh, that was one. Hell. Okay, number one, Coral Gables. We know where Coral Gables is at. Thank you for t- for informing us. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, it, but practically surrounded by Miami. Can't miss it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Brazilian consulate used to be in Bra- in Coral Gables. 
I know the Colombian one is. And okay. What else? Yeah. Anyway, so number two, right, he was talking about the stadium, which let's get to the stadium a li- in a little bit. But and then then three, uh, you know, players. Oh, and then Coral Gables again. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about the players now. Well, before we before we do that, let me. I think there's one more voicemail, and I think they're somewhat connected. Let's listen to this one too. Hi, my name is Joseph. Oops, sorry, wrong one. That's an old one. All right. Let's see, where is it? Here it is. Hi, this is Eric Overland from, I think, Hollywood, Florida now. Originally from Miami. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, Ted Sykowski is right about everything. I agree with him. And uh, you guys do a great show. And uh, Viva Brazil. Brazil's my favorite. Goodbye. Well, I sounded a lot like Ted, Ed. This totally sounded that like sounded Ted. That sounded a lot like Ted. In the beginning, Ted. I was like, all right, man, I, I know Eric Overland, so I was like, all right, that doesn't sound like him, especially towards the end. And when he said that, Viva Brazil, right? yeah, that Eric's from Argentina, so <laughs> I don't think that's him. <laughs> all right, well, anyways... So good, good voicemail. Uh, you know, very, very long, but but good voicemails. But uh, anyway, so he was he was talking about he wants he wants some big name players. He wants Cavani. And now the interesting thing when I was watching some uh, some other commentators talking about us and Inter Miami, they brought up something that was interesting. And the thought was, if you get somebody like Cavani, now they've invested a lot in Carranza, right? And they've invested not a ton, but they still invested. If you if you count the expand the uh, the the super draft, right? So they've invested in Robbie Robinson. If you bring in Cavani, one or both of those players are not going to see the field at all, right? Because you you bring in Cavani, Cavani's playing. So then you 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 stunt Robbie Robinson's uh, growth. Potentially, you stunt Carranza's growth. Maybe they play together. Maybe they don't. If you put one up top, obviously, then he's he's not playing or he's playing in a different position. So that's something I never thought about. It was like, hey, we want Carranza. We want Carranza. But that means all these players that you've already invested in aren't going to play. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, I think you have a point there. Um, Robinson was one of those players that I think even, you know, maybe why the reason why he wasn't too – too enthusiastic when he, he was, you know, when he when he uh, when they announced his name for Miami was because he probably thought he wasn't he wasn't going to get a chance to play. That's my my thoughts. Um, and now he's you know, if it wasn't because Carranza got hurt, he wouldn't have played. And now if they bring in Cavani, Carranza's you know he's ready to go. He's probably going to be playing. Uh, and now if they get Cavani, then he's not going to play for sure. So um, I, I think you're right. I think it, it, you know out of out of those players, the two that are probably going to be playing is Carranza and, and and if Cavani comes or whoever the DP forward is. Um, but um, yeah, Robinson takes a, a back seat, and you got to think there's other forwards as well. They've got Agudelo. They've got uh, uh, the other guy. What's his name? Um, Keysweater. He's yeah, yeah. Think? Jerome Keysweater. Yeah, those guys are never going to see the field. Right. And and to and and uh, Mr. XO Warrior says uh, invested. I think Robinson will survive playing under Cavani. Yeah. I mean, like I said, they didn't necessarily invest a ton of money, but they invested a, a draft pick. And that's only if you really hold any value in the super draft. Right. So if you don't value the super draft, then it's it's it, it means nothing. But the kid did well. So considering. Yeah, I, I sorry. I, I think he did well. I mean, some people are criticizing him a lot because they expected, you know, him to score. He had a couple opportunities. I mean, it was his first two professional games ever. Right. So Th- I, I think I think he's got a lot of potential. And uh, one of the guys just put in, uh, they could loan him. Joseph uh, just put in, uh, they could loan Robinson. Uh, dude, they've got the uh, the Fort Lauderdale team, USL team, that looks like they're going to start playing, Peter. I'm not sure if uh, the USL is also going to start playing. So the USL Champions uh, League, uh, they they've worked out um you know a plan to play and they're going to play in their in their um in their local markets and so they've they want to come back i think it was july's 
11th or 6th. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember the exact date. I had I had it in front of me earlier. But, um, yeah, so they're coming back. They've worked out a deal. The interesting thing is they worked out a deal with their players association where the players are not taking a pay cut. Oh, wow. Keep in mind, those players make a lot less money than MLS players. There's a big drop-off. So, right. But they have not yet worked out this deal for the League One uh, teams yet. So League One is what our, uh, you know, minor league team right so uh, they have not yet worked out that deal um for league one but they're working on it so that should be forthcoming i think soon but it's interesting that usl one wants to play their games in the local market so teams will travel and it's going to be just like normal except they'll be playing inside empty stadiums but every every city every state has different regulations so it, it could be interesting how this all works out and they're talking about maybe keeping them redoing the schedule to where they're playing more local uh, they haven't really announced the League One players either. So no. If there are, um, I know that there were a couple of players that I think were going to be in League One that are, were practicing with the first team, uh, but um, they haven't, you know, released any roster or anything like that. But some of these players might might have to go to that to that uh, team so they can get some playing time. Yeah, and Andres Hoyas is saying Champions League. It's Championship. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Even as I was saying it, it sounded wrong. <laughs> That's why I kind of paused as I was saying it. But the USL Championship, which is a league, right? <laughs> so, but um, which is the Division One, as as Mister XL Warrior states. Um, but that they call it the USL Championship. So League One um, has not yet kind of worked out. But but anyways, uh, so the. You know they want they want uh, we're still hoping for that DP. Everybody wants Cavani. He's going to become available. Do you think it happens, Ed? I don't know, man. Um, it's definitely going to be they they promised it was going to be a DP. Uh, if it's if it's Cavani, I'll be more than happy. I've heard a lot of people saying that it, it could be Hamas, uh, but Hamas. Well, that's not, one of the the, the arguments that they made on on MLS Extra Time is that Hamas actually is a better fit for what we need that's what their thought was now of course it's just opinions everybody's got them but their their opinion was he was a better fit for what we actually need and that bringing in Hamas, you could still play carranza and 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 uh, robinson may or may not play depending on the formation right and uh, and and of course uh, pizarro is going to play yeah as- pizarro plays somewhere uh, whether it be next to or or behind or whatever, but he obviously yeah. still fits on the field. You're you're playing him for sure. It's like a like a, I remember uh, there was a video where uh, where Ray Hudson was saying that you know they they, could, they were going to bring in Precky back in the day, back in 2001, and they were like, oh yeah, but where are we going to play him? He's like, you just put him in there. Let he's he's going to fit in wherever you put him. So I think that's you know basically what's going to happen here. Bizarro is going to fit wherever you put him because. I think it was against the Philadelphia Union game that you went to go see in uh, Tampa. Mm-hmm. He was he was everywhere. He was everywhere. Yeah. He played every position. He had not even practiced with the team yet, so he's just playing wherever he felt like he was needed. He was all over the place. He was playing forward. He was playing defensive mid. He was playing you know all over the place. Right. So maybe they'll make him do that. Just. Joseph Jeem says, uh, but wait, wasn't League One canceled? I mean, that's what we thought, but what I'm reading now, I was reading an article in, uh, in The Athletic, and uh, Championship is definitely back, and they're working on League One. So apparently it's not canceled. Right. Uh, at least not yet. That's what we all assumed, and that's what we were hearing. But um, And then uh, interesting thing is Mr. XO Warrior says, let's ro- loan Robinson out to Miami FC, to these guys right here. That, Oops. that could work. Um, that might happen. Uh, I, I don't know how, how the relationship is. Yeah, right? that'll be interesting what, how that relationship is. There, the, if, if Miami FC is smart, they will create that relationship, which is, is tough with Ricardo Silva having, having personal issues with MLS, trying to go, at, go battling head-to-head with MLS and, and trying to buy his way into the league through the, um, through the uh, broadcast deals and all that kind of stuff. So, you know... Uh, that that'll be yeah. interesting to see if they can work out some sort of partnership. That'd be interesting. I hope they do because uh, uh, a lot of these players need to be playing. They need experience. Uh, uh, USL one is kind of a step down. Yeah. If if we're if Robinson is not going to play for Inter Miami this year, 
I'd rather see him in a championship team than a League One team because he's going to get better competition. Right. You know, use yeah. the League One for, for the academy kids that are coming up. Yeah, because, it, uh, for example, Miami FC was competing with MLS teams, beat some of those teams. You know, they've won so many championships. And so it's, it's a really good team that, would, that could compete with MLS teams. So you want him to be in a team like that uh, and get some, uh, some time and, and playing experience. And Andres Hoy says, but Miami FC has loaned MLS players, so who knows? Yeah, that's true. They have. But, you know, that, that relationship is a little bit caustic. So, so we'll see. So, Ed, there, another thing that uh, our buddy um, Ted was, was talking about was Miami Freedom Park. So yeah. we, we know that Miami Freedom Park is, is you know, he's asking, are we going to play in Fort Lauderdale forever? Because he doesn't want to drive to Fort Lauderdale. And if he's going to drive, he wants some big name stars. But we know Ted's coming no matter what. He came for the Fusion. Yeah. He'll come for Inter Miami regardless. But he's not alone. There were some other uh, people in our, in our chat that uh, agreed that they want to see some stars if they're going to drive up from Miami as well. I'm looking for, for one of those chats, but uh, it's a little further back. So, you know, the, the stadium in, in, in Miami, you know, this week, I think it was, uh, they did, uh, you know, put in for some, like, permits, um, some, some, uh, some, you know, I forget, what do they call them, Ed, those permits? Um, I, I don't exactly know, Peter, <laughs> now that you mentioned it, uh, but, um, yeah, I think it's rezoning. It's, it yeah, called? there's zoning permits, but it's, a, there's a... A specific uh, name that they give it, uh, but it, oh, special area plan that outlines the the broad vision of uh, replacing Melrose Golf Course with uh, with uh, um, you know the stadium and all that. So this uh, special special area plan, the SAP. So they filed that. So that's great positive movement. But if you read in the Miami Herald, it's a very long article in the Miami Herald about it, saying that. This is still a long ways away. This is great. It's forward movement. At least you see that they're not just sitting around doing nothing during this pandemic. But, but um, you know, and they did put out a new, a new image that we'll bring up here. And in this image, you can actually see where, I don't think you saw it before, but there is a road dividing between where the businesses and the stadium would be and the park. So I don't, I don't recall seeing this, this uh, fairly, what, three-lane road, it looks like, going cutting through the property. But that is now part of the plan. Maybe it always was, and you just didn't really see it in the artist's rendering, yeah. but you do see it in, the, in this rendering now. And, uh, and that, you know, it's going to have a big parking garage, which is great. All this is great stuff, but, uh, and, and they've, they've got a long way to go. This is just a, a, one of the early steps, and it sounds like it could still be years away. So will they play in Miami? I'd say, yeah, but it might it might be a little while. And here's another image, uh, the, uh, a larger uh, aerial shot that we've got. This is an image we've we've all I think seen before. Um, see a lot of the businesses going along the edge, and then this park in there. And th so they're they're not even sure what the definition of the park is. What what does um, you know what's in the park? Yeah, and all that kind of stuff. So is is it just a a, a park? Uh, there's, apparently, there's, they don't feel like there's a lot of people that would be walking up to this park. Uh, is, it, is it a driving-in park? Um, there, the one thing about that street is they will have some parking off the street, not for game day, but you know people could park off the street and go to the park. So many details still yet to be worked out that we may still be three, four years down the line. Right. Um, yeah, you know, I think it's good that they're starting to do this right now because people are kind of distracted with everything that's happening in the world right now. So I didn't hear that much opposition like they usually had. I think because, yeah, everybody's, you know, I, this is a perfect time to get all this stuff done, Peter. You know, try to push all those permits through and everything now. And, um, and hopefully they'll, it'll, it'll be sooner than later. Unfortunately, Miami, everything drags. This is kind of like a banana republic, unfortunately. So um, I expect this to be driving or taking the train to... Uh, Fort Lauderdale for maybe more than the two, three years that we kind of expect to be going. Um, I'm ready to take the train, Peter. Yeah, I mean, 
you're gonna you're gonna have to right it's it's uh you're gonna have to figure out a way to come up here just like when they eventually move to miami i will have to figure out a way how to get south right so it's normal we're all just gonna have to figure our way out this is a tri-county area we want people this we want this to be south florida's team you're just gonna have to get used to you know to me it's no big deal driving in south florida is no big deal it's like you know everything's at least 30 minutes away this uh when i you know i'm, I'm moving uh next week and i'll probably then be about an hour away from this from the stadium uh so it's it's going to take me a little while to get to 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 miami freedom park whenever it opens um but just suck it up and and enjoy your team and make the drive but i do think uh the, I, the one thing i'm happy with is that they are they are make they're they're doing something they're not just you know during this pandemic when everything is shut down they at least submitted something they're not just sitting around doing nothing because now um, they, you know, people can look at this this uh, uh, zoning um, you know, permit, and 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 it's just step one. And now, but the the negative thing is, they did say that this could they they could legally um, find things to argue about in this spe- uh, special zoning plan. So there there's it's still there's still so many bumps to get over. Um, they still need four out of five um, commissioners to approve it. We got a long way to go, but again, they're making progress. Hey, at least one thing is you got to be happy about is at least we've got a stadium. For those of you that don't want to drive to Fort Lauderdale, um, at least you got something. You've got a stadium to go to. You have a team, and you can embrace. And you know, it's 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 your local team, even if it may be an hour drive for you. It'll get it'll get down to South eventually, but. I think for the quality of soccer that Inter Miami is planning to bring us uh, with these big name players like Cavani, I think an hour drive is well worth it. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, it's uh, Peter. You know, um, I'm I'm just looking forward to going to the games <laughs> whenever we so, can. Yeah, it's just been so long, man, and and we we got a little taste. I at least got to go to one game. You didn't even get to go to any game, so it's got it's got to suck for you more than it sucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I did go to the preseason games. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, but yeah, man, this is a this is a this is crazy. I, there's there's uh, one of the guys asking about Jurgen Meinko. I don't know if you saw that one, Peter. Uh, saying Joseph Jeems saying maybe one of the reasons why Jurgen Meinko was fired. Uh, we don't know if he was fired. That's yeah, don't know if he was fired or if he quit. Uh, we just know he's no longer with the team. Um, I assume they may have let him go just because, you know, the complaints that we've had on the business side. And, and yeah, I mean, to, to, jo- to um, um, was that Joseph that point? That, yeah, to Joseph James' uh, point, if he was fired, maybe uh, the stadium's taking so long uh, you know, he, it could be part of the reason, you know, because while I'm focusing on marketing and things like that, because that's my uh, professional background, uh, you know, his uh, his main job is getting that uh, stadium done yeah. and and it's not happening. So if he was fired, then maybe you got something there. Maybe, uh, you know, the this, this stadium um, is part of the reason. But I think that's just a piece. I think it's just a piece. I think the business side of Inter Miami has suffered, right? In general. Yeah. Um, especially the shirt sponsor uh, was right. ever announced, and we all believe that that was a done deal. It's probably not going to happen anymore. Uh, and they, like I think you mentioned, they didn't mention a whole bunch of sponsors. So um, I think that's a that's that's something that should have been mentioned. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, uh, you you, I think you jogged by uh, the stadium and you said, "Oh, look, it's the right. Lexus, Lexus VIP." You were the first one to see that, and then everybody else started talking about it. So. Yeah, I mean, I was there every single every single week. So. Um, and so, and yeah, Jay was- Laugh is Jay Laugh put in in here. Let's bring that up. When is the new ske- uh, stadium scheduled to open? I guess the question is, which stadium are you talking about? Lockhart. Uh, or or Inter Miami CF Stadium, um, it technically is ready. So it's, as soon as uh, you know we all get back to seeing live games, it's ready to open. So that's that's all uh, up to MLS. As far as the Miami Park, Miami Freedom Park, I mean, it was scheduled to be two years. But we, I mean, I knew once they built Lockhart 
the new Lockhart, it was going to be more than two years. And now with with the pandemic and 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 just the way Miami politics are, I'm just going to go on a guess and say four years. Wow. Um, I'm hoping for three, oh, but you might, be, you might be right. You might be right. I Here, think it might be four, maybe even five, Peter. Here's the thing is I'm a Broward guy, and I want to see Miami Freedom Park open because it's good for the team. It's good for my team. And Miami is my team regardless if I live in West Palm Beach or if I lived in Kendall. They're my team, and so I want them to do well. And having a stadium in Miami, I think, is a great business decision. But also having the training facility in, in Fort Lauderdale, I think, is a great business decision as well. It becomes South Florida's team. So they definitely need to get that stadium open in Miami. I'll be more than happy to, to find my way down south, whether it be driving or taking a train or what have you. Um, so, you know, I can't wait for that to open. But um, I, I would hope it opens in, in, say, three years. But, man, Miami politics... They don't make it easy, Ed. They sure don't, man. And you know, I just shake my head because you know this. It, it, that's what happened with the fusion as well. Uh, they tried to have a. They tried to pay at the Orange Bowl, and uh, that didn't work out. And they right. tried to play in other places in Miami, and just you know, they just didn't. The, there's no support from uh, the, the from uh, the politicians in this town. They just everybody wants, you know, something for it, you know. So. Judge, Judge Dredd, the law says, I'd totally make the three-hour drive from Kissimmee to see Inner Miami kicking some heads. So anybody that uh, complains about driving to Miami or to Fort Lauderdale, shut up. We got a guy here driving from Orlando area right down to Kissimmee. So uh, that's that's far. And, and, that's and some dedication right there. He gave up on, uh, on that's that just, purple team. Right. That's the beauty of it is he has a hometown team. And he said, nah, man, <laughs> they're not my team. Uh, that's precious, man. That's great. It's great. Um, it's yeah. And uh, I think he also said here, I want to be the groundskeeper for Lockhart. Great job that would be. Hey, you know, they, I, I saw some guys mowing the lawn there, um, you know, that last Wednesday when I was there. I was there on a Wednesday hoping to – I was there on Wednesday around lunchtime. I was hoping to catch some players training or something like that, but – didn't catch it, but I did catch them a lo- mowing the lawn. So they got, they, I mean, they got their one guy, their main guy, Matt. I forgot how you say his last name, but it starts with a B. And uh, but he's he's got some guys. You want to move down here, Judge? Uh, you don't want to cut some grass? I'm sure you know. Maybe maybe you can get a gig. What kind yeah, of grass man. cutting credentials do you have? Yeah, and uh, yeah, they they lose they use the, the latest equipment. I mean, have you seen that mower? Yeah, it was a Toro mower, which is interesting. That's uh one of the clients we work with wow look at them yeah, yeah but that is, it's just it's uh the way it leaves the grass it's just incredible man it looks like it's a rug or something you know it's just, yeah they're doing a good job mm-hmm. it's a he knows what he's doing that's for sure one world one goal says someone earlier said one of beck's friends should come like neville's uh butt skulls peter Ned. Um, what do you think about him bringing one of his buddies down? Um, they, 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 they may be a little old. Well, no, I think they were talking about for the front office. From right? the front office? Okay. Yeah, because I think all those guys are retired, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're all retired. <laughs> that, that wouldn't be bad, but the thing is, you know, I, I, he, he should bring a buddy that, that could, you know, speak Spanish or something, because he's not going to understand half the people down here. Yeah. And they need to get more familiarized with Miami. Well, not only that, they need to know... MLS, right? And so it, this is a business role. So right. what do those guys know about the business side? I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I, I, those are guys that you would put on the player side. But we got a guy for the player side. So you need somebody with a good business acumen. So I would. I think it makes sense to bring somebody in uh, from from within MLS that has done the business side of things. Bring in somebody like uh, from Seattle. Bring back Garth Lagerway. Remember Garth Lagerway from the Miami Fusion? He's a front office guy with a successful MLS team. Bring him, you know, hire him away from Seattle. Wow, that's a good idea, man. He'd probably love to come down here. I hear it rains too much up there. I don't know. He seems happy up there, but but I'm just <laughs> think I just threw his name out there because he's been a successful GM and uh, I, I, he's on the business side, but I think he's involved in the soccer side as well. Um, and you know he he spent some time here with the fusion, so he's you know close to my heart. Or do you think Paul's just going to remain you know doing everything? Is he going to be the Superman for this team? Doing I mean, 
the, the soccer side and the business side? There's only, I think, three MLS teams that currently do that. Um, us, um, maybe maybe a few more. I, I think what New England might do it. Bruce Arena might handle both sides. I'm not sure. But uh, I think Bezbachenko in, in Columbus handles both sides. And now the guy up in Vancouver handles both sides because, um, you know, one of the guys got, you know, the, the guy that was handling the uh, business side got fired. So, right. So they're, they're, they're in the single, you know. So it could be that, yeah, that, that, that Paul remains in that position. Uh, he's basically done most of his job already, which is, you know, get the team together. And, and um, he's got, what, two more players if, if if Perez uh, goes through, he's got two more players to sign up, and then he's pretty much going to be twiddling his thumbs for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess he might have the time to do you know the business side. Yeah. All right. So let's let's move on, Ed. Let's let's talk about one other subject uh, that that did pop up this week, and let's see how concerned are we. One of the Emma, uh, Inter Miami players tested positive for the. Uh, thing we're all going through that we're trying not to say yeah yeah that thing man there's a uh, reason we try not to say it guys is because uh you know it, it causes problems on the videos so but um but this whole pandemic thing one of the players came down with the virus and uh, what do you think ed is that wow. something that concerns you yeah it is because i didn't expect it to happen i mean they uh miami or, or uh, florida is you know it's, it's starting to peak right now all the cases and stuff so um it's kind of. I, I was hoping it would happen to Orlando. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm hoping it wouldn't <laughs> hope for anybody, but for it to happen to anybody. But um, you know, it's it, this isn't the first case. There's already been six yeah. positive cases in, in Major League Soccer, Peter. Yeah, there has been. Um, I was trying to find where the uh, the the other group of players were. Um, well, um, I two of them from Atlanta United, yep. Peter. Two of them from Miami United. There's a Philadelphia so, Union player, DC United player, FC Dallas player. Yep. And now the Inter Miami guy. Right. So, were you surprised by this? Um, I, I kind of was. I kind of was because uh, we heard that the team was going to take care of the players. They were going to test everybody all the time and on all that. But sometimes, uh, you know. Once they started opening everything up, uh, people kind of started slacking and not putting their masks on. And, you know, I don't know if you, you, you've been out yet, but if you go to restaurants, a lot of people aren't wearing their masks. And, um, you know, it's just not a good idea, man. And, and, and that's why there's a big spike right now. And, and now, now we've got one of the players. Maybe the player went somewhere or was close to somebody that that had it i don't know we i don't know the full details don't you wish you knew who the player was i'm dying to know who the player is but they don't they don't announce that no but uh, i saw an article by michelle coffin where she was saying that uh whoever the player is could be probably back yeah by the time the the team's ready to go to orlando so yeah just got a self-quarantine for a little while apparently it was asymptomatic so that's you know, something, I guess. I don't know if that's good or not, but uh, he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, no severe symptoms, apparently. Um, nobody else has tested positive, so that's a good thing. I wasn't surprised whatsoever. This is something I, I expected to happen. You know, these players are, you know, you're, you're hoping they're taking care of themselves, but they do have to go out in public. They, they do have to go to the grocery store. People are getting more relaxed. It's going to happen. And so I'm not surprised that, that it happened at all. Um, it's happened to NBA players as well. Um, and I was I was hearing that it happened to several players in the German league as well. So, you know, and they're playing. And, and the, I know some of the questions people have had are, how many players does this have to happen to before they decide to cancel the tournament? You know, how? Uh, so that that's I, one player, two players. I think you're fine no matter what. You've got depth. And, and, and uh, they're allowing the, a larger game day roster for that reason. So, and they're allowing for more substitutions, not for that reason, more so because of the, uh, uh, you know, short preseason basically and, and, uh, the hot as hell conditions in Orlando, but, um, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that it's, that we got some guys that are sick and, and it's, and it's going to happen until, until there's a, a, uh, you know, a cure, it's going to happen. 
vaccine or whatever. Vaccine, it. yeah. It's, it's going to be. It's, we're we're going to be living like that. This is the new normal. We walking around with a mask on and kind of sucks, you know. We we're all talking about. Oh, remember that one time we used to go out and have fun and not have to wear a mask. <laughs> That's how it's going to be from now on until we get that vaccine, man. Yeah, and you were asking if I've been into restaurants. I actually, I you know, I went to a restaurant today, but I haven't gone into a restaurant yet. I keep yeah. just doing the uh, the ordering ahead and picking up at the curbside pickup. Um, so I had a Father's Day meal and Happy Father's Day to to any father watching this. Um, you know, so we had my Father's Day lunch and uh, went to the old Outback and uh, you know ordered on the phone and then just picked up at curbside. So we haven't got and even when I'm at curbside, I'm still uh, you know I'm wearing the mask for the for the 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 the, uh, the waitress or whatever handing me my food. And and taking my payment and all that. And so. as soon as you get the payment and everything, you're putting on that disinfectant in your hand. And oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm I'm doing the best I can, and I'm not a germaphobe. I'm not, I I'm I'm normally with that kind of stuff. I'm pretty relaxed, but can't mess around with this thing. Can't mess around with it. And 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 going through this whole buying a house thing and all that. It's interesting how all the things that I was obviously I was out a lot into many different homes to find one that I liked. But every time we went into a home, we had to put on booties. We had to put on gloves. We had to put on masks. And even with the gloves and all that, we're still uh, sanitizing the hands afterwards, all that kind of stuff. It was pretty crazy. And but you're right. People are getting more relaxed now. And, you know, as things are starting to open up more and more, people are just sick and tired of wearing these uh, these silly masks. And and they're just like the hell with it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um, I've got my inner Miami mask, so I wear my inner Miami mask everywhere. Yeah, that you do. I've seen you. Now, for that uh, video, for the um, the stadium video, you had it on. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Even, like, even, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Yeah, even though there, I probably didn't need it because I wasn't around anybody. Right. But That's what I was thinking, too. I was like, there, nobody's there with him. But Okay, fine. We I just wanted to show off. Okay, fine. Show. I wore it for effect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, ah, and it looked cool, man. And I thought it was pretty cool. And and a little secret, I only wore it when I was on camera. If the camera oh, was not facing me, I was not wearing it. Mm -hmm. Just that's cool. I mean, but I wasn't around anybody, so there was nobody around uh, as I was walking the perimeter of the the stadium. But that, that's that's too bad because I was hoping that you would be able to see some players. I know. Something. And I went at my lunchtime, and I and I did kind of rush it a little because I'm like I have a limited amount of time, and I luckily don't live too far from the stadium, so I went during my lunchtime, went and walked around the stadium, and then hurried back so I could get back to work, which was luckily at home. But um, yeah, I didn't see anybody other than the guys cutting the grass, a few cars in the parking lot, saw some workers here and there doing some little bits here and there, but not a whole lot, not a lot of activity. Wasn't much different than when I would go there on a Sunday morning. Wow, I hear you, Peter. So I hear you, Peter. Ed, I think I think uh, that about covers it for this week. Uh, yeah, got everything. Um, you know, we had that hookup in the beginning, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh oh. Dog. What? Dog freaking out. Dog Are freaking you out. The dog with you, or is, it, or is he staying with the home? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, we're taking him. We're taking him. Oh, you're taking out. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, see. yeah. We're taking him. He, he, he'll, it'll be interesting to see how he reacts to the new house because you know, so only you know, he's known this one, right? So right. we've been in this house for a long, long, long time. So, but uh, and and just a little programming note. Um, I will not be part of next week's show because next Sunday is for me moving day. So Peter's moving. I will be moving next Sunday. This is the week of packing. All day today was packing. Last night, yesterday, I, no, I did it at night because it was a little cooler. I was in the attic, taking everything out of the attic, ready to go. Uh, but next week, I will not be doing the show. But Ed, you plan on doing a show. Yeah, I'm going to do it with Ricky Ricardo. You guys already saw Ricky Ricardo a couple weeks ago, and uh, he's been uh, you know, getting ready. I told him, all right, prepare, man, because Peter's got to move. So um, we, we actually wanted to help. Peter move, but Peter, you know, since he's got money, he's like, "Don't worry, guys, I've got a, I've got movers coming." Well, so, they, I hired movers to move to the new uh, FM TV mansion. Yeah, the mansion. <laughs> yeah, let's see, you finally said it. It's a mansion. Um. Yeah. Well, before I see Joseph Genius put this up a couple of days, a couple of times. So let's 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 answer. What's your prediction for us for the tournament? Let's end on that. 
Where do you think, Ed, we, we finish in this tournament? We're going to beat Orlando for sure. Um, uh, I think we could – I'm hoping for at least a tie against the, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is okay. pretty good. Um, uh, but we can, we can, we can take them. Uh, DC, uh, what's the other team? Um, no, it wasn't DC. It was, we play uh, Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire. I mm-hmm. think we could take Chicago, though. Chicago's like a rebuilt team. Yeah, they're, we don't they're... know much about them. Right, but I think we could take them, and I am crossing my fingers, saying that we win two out of three games and we advance. I'd say we definitely advance as well. I think we come in third place though and advance with you know the one of the as one of the top four um, third place finishers. So I think I think we come out of this just barely scraping by, and then um, maybe we could even win a game in the next round. Depends on who, who we play. Against. Yeah, I because I don't think you know we're is especially now with a solid defense with LGP in the back. You know we're gonna have a really good defense. So these may be what some if we low, get Cavani. Now, up top. but here's the thing. Uh, you know I know we want Cavani, but how do you get Cavani into the country when we're not? You know we're uh, you know flying restrictions and all that. I think if we get Cavani, if we get this DP, I think it happens after, after. this tournament. Because they are talking about reopening another transfer. So they've, they're opening the transfer window up uh, for like a two-day window. And that's for people to like get some deals finalized that were already or, or get, you know, get players like LGP and stuff like that. Um, but a player like Cavani, I think that takes a little longer. And, you know, and, and, you know, with the way the world is right now and the traveling restrictions, I think he comes later. If we get him or a player of that caliber, I don't know if it's him or if it's somebody else, but I think that comes later. But I, I'd say, you know, going back to the question, I'd say we 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 uh, make it out of the group stage and we win one more game, and and that I think would be a successful run. I yeah. think they may be low scoring games unless we get a Cavani or something like that beforehand. But as is, it could be low scoring games. We got a solid defense, and um, you know, maybe not the most exciting, but you know, it's preseason basically. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So we're of course we're thinking positive, and we're thinking we're going to advance. So we're going to advance. One world, one goal says if we get Cavani, we get cup. Oh, yeah, we get the cup. And <laughs> uh, and and Yuri says, Peter, do not stress about moving days. It's good moving day. Do not stress. Oh, you could have thought Yuri. Yuri, how you doing? He's in Dallas. Yeah, Yuri. Uh, yeah, he that's he's got a moving business. Look at uh, that. Well, I did hire movers so that I don't have to stress. Uh, so. You know, that that way I, it takes one less thing I have to worry about. I have to worry about closing on the house. So the, this last week is going to be stressful, but moving will not be one of those stressful things. So that's wow. good. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for uh, finding us again on this new stream as the old stream died because my internet died and the entire neighborhood. It wasn't just me. It wasn't my house. It was the entire neighborhood that went down. But thanks so much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And Tuesday, don't forget Tuesday. That's a good reminder, Ed, because I was about to end the show. I was about I to know. say, Tuesday I was about to say those. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, we got the Spanish show, and with Ricky Ricardo. Yeah. And I don't know what are we going to have something on Thursday, or you're going to be too busy. I no, you're not going to have anything from me for the rest uh, for another week or two. Week. All right. Another two, maybe two weeks. And you know, maybe my next, uh, the next thing will be me sitting by the pool because I may not have the studio built yet, you know? Oh, nice. I may That'd not have that, but I will have a pool. So maybe it'll be me on a floaty. Drinking, yeah, and drinking uh, <laughs> uh, one of, a pina colada with one of them. Uh, how, 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 would that, how would that be? Me on a floaty with my laptop and a, and a mixing board. Yeah, I, I, don't gonna I, don't I don't think that's going to work. I don't think, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. No, I don't think that's going to work. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to tune in on Tuesday and again on Sunday. Same guys, both days. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, thanks a lot. See ya.